Audi has finalised its deal to buy into Sauber and make the Swiss team its works Formula 1 entry in 2026. Less than two months after we learned Audi was definitely going to build an engine for the new rules, we now know for sure which team will be running it. There's plenty to ponder as the first ever Audi F1 project takes shape and we're here to explain how it will work, what key questions still need to be answered and what the latest is with Volkswagen Group's sister brand Porsche as the Audi program gathers pace. The key parts of this deal are that Sauber will become the strategic partner of Audi's F1 program and Audi plans to acquire a stake in the Sauber Group. The terms including what the size of the state will be and when it will happen have not been disclosed, but the expectation previously was that it would be a gradual investment with the stake increasing between now and 2026 until Audi is the majority shareholder, with current owner Finn Rousing retaining a minority stake. There's no rush for Audi to assume majority control and brand the team in its image until the engine's ready because in the meantime Sauber can just be Sauber. It will continue to race as Alfa Romeo until the end of 2023, honouring its existing title sponsorship with the Italian manufacturer. But as that arrangement is a marketing deal rather than being a conventional works team, it will be a very convenient handover. The Alfa Romeo stickers will come off, the official entry name will change, and that's about it. It's not like there are complicated engineering tie-ups to untangle or a raft of Alfa Romeo engineers to replace. Then the team will presumably run under the Sauber name in 2024 and 2025 because it will keep running with Ferrari power units until Audi's engine is ready for the first season of the 2026 rules. This will be the most practical solution and avoid the obvious awkwardness of the team being entered as Audi Ferrari, which just sounds wrong and commercially would probably be a total no-go. It's unclear what level of involvement Audi will want in Sauber, but no manufacturer would make this kind of commitment and then give the existing team total autonomy. We can be sure that Audi will want to influence everything it can about the team, and a lot of thought will have gone into how best to integrate an engine facility in Germany and the car's design headquarters being in Switzerland. What that means in terms of personnel is still to be determined, as until now the only news from Audi has related to its engine program, which is being overseen by Audi F1 CEO Adam Baker, with Oliver Hoffman responsible for the F1 program at board level. There's also no word yet on drivers, although that will be bumped up the priority list as more key parts of the project are put in place. This will be a Sauber second full works arrangement after the Swiss team was owned by BMW in the mid-2000s. Sauber says it guarantees the long-term future of the company and will bring the team to new heights, while owner Rousing, who saved Sauber from financial collapse a few years ago, called Audi the best strategic partner for the company. There's no doubt this is great news for Sauber and a massive opportunity to take a big step up the grid. Sauber Motorsport CEO and current team principal Fred Vasseur said the Audi partnership will be a key step for the team's long-term ambitions and called it an honour and a great responsibility to be Audi's official works team. He's unsurprisingly confident that Sauber can help Audi achieve its objectives, which publicly are to be competitive within three years. And given Audi will not be entering F1 just to make up the numbers, we can take that to mean fighting for wins. But it will not be a simple process, for Sauber has been in a period of recovery since its financial troubles in the mid-2010s and is still far from being a race-winning organisation. With Rousing's investment and Vasseur's leadership, Sauber has gradually expanded its teams and facilities. This year it returned to the sort of upper midfield competitiveness that Sauber's enjoyed in the past, but it's still lacking in some key areas. Operationally, Sauber makes too many mistakes and it lags behind other teams in terms of production capacity. So the team needs to become sharper and the rate of development needs to increase. And although lots of good things are always said about Sauber's wind tunnel, the jury is still out on whether Sauber can up its quantity without compromising the quality of its technical work. There will be some low-hanging fruit as Sauber hasn't quite managed to run at F1's budget cap so far and was hoping to do so in 2023. That's something it will surely be able to do under the terms of this Audi deal, although it is worth stressing that Audi can't just pile money into the project for the team to catch up. Sauber will be bound by the terms of that budget cap, which governs things like capital expenditure as well as the running of the team, so this will be a long-term project. 
That's exactly why the deal will have been sorted this far in advance, as Audi now has three full seasons to mould Sauber in its image. It gives it the best chance of ensuring that if Audi does a good job with its engine, the team will be capable of not just building a car that can achieve its goals, but can operate as a front-running team as well. While Audi's F1 entry is now rock solid with key details confirmed, its Volkswagen Group sister brand Porsche's future remains extremely unclear. Porsche had well publicised negotiations with Red Bull about a joint venture for the new set of F1 engine regulations, but this fell through because Porsche effectively wanted to buy a 50% stake in the team. When the talks collapsed, Porsche made it clear that its interest in F1 wasn't dead, and we understand it remains in talks with teams about a potential 2026 entry, but its options will be limited unless it relents on a desire for a significant ownership stake. Audi buying into Sauber removes one of the most eligible options for Porsche, but there are still candidate partners from the existing grid, with Williams, McLaren, Haas and Alfa Tauri all offering different possibilities. When Audi was exploring routes into the championship, McLaren and Williams were understood to have made it clear that selling a majority stake was out of the question. That would presumably remain the case with Porsche, especially as it would mean ceding control without much in return, whereas at least Audi offered a full works engine project, something Porsche is not tooled up to do. But no outright stake in the team, or perhaps just a minority one, would likely be met with a more positive response. Haas and Alfa Tauri, meanwhile, are thought to be potential contenders for a majority Porsche stake or an outright takeover, although whether either could be sold is bound to depend on the exact terms. An alternative is to ignore all the existing teams entirely and join forces with the Andretti organisation to create a new one. Michael Andretti has so far been unsuccessful in convincing F1 and the FIA to grant him an 11th entry, as they would rather it goes to a new manufacturer. It means Porsche and Andretti could align in a marriage of convenience, and the two companies do already work together in Formula E. If Porsche does find a partner team, the likely outcome is that it will be supplied with the engine that Audi's building. Audi is willing to supply more teams and will set up its engine facility to be capable of that, and the VW Group is thought to still be keen for both manufacturers to be in F1. So that kind of collaboration could be the only way to make it happen. And to be honest, it makes a lot of sense.